One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap, clap for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for that sweet power, that anointing. We thank you for your presence, which changes everything in us and about us. We thank you that we can be confident in this day because of your word, because your word is the truth and your word always prevails. We thank you that all of the promises of God are yes, and in you, Jesus, amen. And so we receive it, and we sur surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now, in Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord, amen. <laughs> All right, look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Okay, so if this is a short sermon, don't be going, don't, don't tell people like, you know, pastor only treat for 20 minutes, so don't be going to tell nobody that, because they're going to be disappointed. <laughs> They're going to think that this is the norm. If you, if you share, let them know, no, we actually were there at 10. So don't be thinking that you're going to come and get out in 20 minutes. But we're just going to preach this word because I do want to be uh, mindful of the time. But also the emphasis was what took place. We needed to experience that. And, and you guys, you're going to get your breakthroughs. Don't be disappointed. So uh, we've been preaching on the force of heaven. We're going to preach the force of heaven, part four. The force of heaven, part four, A. Yeah, see, y'all remind me. Part, yeah, A. So then I can remind myself, don't go too far in these notes. Amen. And so Matthew 6, 9 and 10 in the King James. You guys know that. We've looked at it um, all this time, these other three series. But here you go. They already put an A up on the board. So they reminded me. Amen. Praise God. So um, Matthew 6, 9 and 10, and we see that this is the Lord's Prayer. So we've heard this prayed and we've heard people, you know, we've all, a lot of us have learned this, but uh, we've sometimes missed the significance of what's being stated here. And so he says, after this manner, therefore pray. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So his name stands alone. Thy kingdom come, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? In earth as it is in heaven. And so what does this let us know? However it is in heaven, that's the way we are to be praying, right? And so now sometimes things aren't the way you want them to be, but you're to pray, right? We prayed, a lot of you came up to the altar today for change. You said you needed change. Well, you pray for that change, right? Well, Jesus is letting them know things aren't going to always feel like this, but this is the mandate. This is how you're to pray. You not, are not to be comfortable with things being in the earth in a uh, uh, different way than they are in heaven. Come on. So do you know that the church is never supposed to be comfortable with sickness? Come on. The church is never supposed to be comfortable with lack. Come on, somebody. The church is not supposed to be comfortable with depression. We're not supposed to accept those things as the normal. No, because Jesus says we're to pray this way. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How many know nobody's depressed in heaven? Come, oh, come on, man. Nobody's sick in heaven. Come on. Nobody's broke. Come on. So we cannot... Settle in and allow ourselves to live in this status quo that's in the earth because we've been given a mandate on how we're to pray. Now, let's go to Luke, Luke 17, 20 and 21, Luke 17, 20 and 21. And so he says, and when he demanded of the Pharisees, when uh, when he was demanded of the so they're questioning him, he's demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom should come. He answered them and said. The kingdom of God comes not with observation. And so people are waiting. When is it going to come? When is it going to come? He's saying it's not going to come with observation. Next verse. Neither shall they say, lo, here or there. See, that's what people are doing. In these last days, people are going to be like saying, it's over there. God's over there. God, don't follow any of them. Don't fall for that. You need to be in this oneness with God to where you cannot be deceived. Neither shall... They say, lo, here or lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is where? Come on. Y'all believe it? The kingdom of God is within you. So we're talking about the force of heaven. So what does this mean? The force of heaven is in me. 
See, it was different when Jesus was in the earth. He was giving them demonstration. And so he had to, he had connection, but he had to die and pay the sin price so that now we could be connected and now it comes upon us. So we don't have to look at it from a distance. The kingdom of God is within you. And so the force of heaven is within us and we have power to release it. Look at your name and say, I can release the force of heaven. Okay, so we can release it, and now if we release the force of heaven, we can release the force of heaven, and it will change atmospheres wherever we go. Amen. Huh? Come on. Y'all, you know what? You, if you're paying attention to some of the stuff that went out in prayer today as I'm praying over people, that starts to let you know, oh, man, this kind of power, this kind of power can be released. We have the power inside of us to release it into atmospheres come on how many know you can go into a situation where people are panicking and all of a sudden you can release the force of heaven and bring a calm Amen. come on you can go into an atmosphere where people are sick and everybody's sick and they're asking you did you get it yet you say no i didn't get that but let me give you what i got Amen. and that'll be the force of heaven being released into, how many of y'all want to be in a situation where everybody was sick, but then you showed up and everybody got healed? Anybody up in here with me? How many of y'all ready for things to change in such a way where when people are coughing and all that and, and they like to avoid people, well, you're one of those people who say, oh, you're sick? Let me give you a hug. Come on, y'all. See, that don't make no sense, right? It says somebody's sick. They, they cough and, <clears throat> and you say, excuse me, let me give you a hug. Says, no, no, no. Because what do we do down here in the earth? We wear a mask. You understand the mask got nothing to do with heaven? Amen. And we've already learned through this thing, the mask don't protect you from nothing. Come on, somebody. How many of you, could, we were talking about this, you can smell somebody's breath through that mask. <laughs> now, if you can smell their breath, you surely going to get some particles coming out. So that ain't really helping nobody. But we can have such power inside of us to where we're walking around with such healing. Think about this. See, y'all laughed at me when I said, if people are coughing and something, you're talking about give me a hug. What did Jesus do? Huh? What did he do? He didn't go by and try to avoid people. He didn't try to avoid touching them. A man, they had leprosy. The lepers were kicked out of the city. Jesus would go to them and embrace them. Why? Because he had a force that was on the inside of him that he could release and it would bring change. Come on, somebody to any atmosphere that he stepped into. I'm going to tell you today that this same thing I'm preaching about is in us. This is what Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is within you. He was prepping them. For what's going to happen. But how many know he's not going to the cross? He already went. And so when he did, some things changed. A lot of things have changed. And so now we have power. Go to 1 John. 1 John 4.17. 1 John 4.17, King James. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is. This is the part I want you to focus on. As he is, what does that say? So are we where? In this world? So as he is, so what does that mean to you? As Jesus is. How many of y'all think Jesus is scared? So why are you scared? Huh? How many of y'all think Jesus is sick? So why are you sick? You see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, make fun or anything like that, but I want you to recognize what the Bible's saying. As he is, so are we, what? So, so does this mean I cannot wait till I get to heaven and get some power? Because, we, listen, y'all want to know something? We don't really get much of a description. We do in Revelation and stuff like that. They get some images of Jesus, but he don't spend so much time. Like how much time does Jesus spend in his Bible talking about how he's living in heaven? You ever, you ever looked at that? 
It's not a lot. He starts talking about he's going to make mansions for you. But he don't. Come on. Jesus is never talking about, you know, I got a I, man. I got a tight mansion up there. He don't even say much about that. We know that he sits at the right hand of the father. But what does he say in Ephesians is that now we will be given joint seating with him. So Jesus, every time he's sharing stuff, it's always for our benefit. It's so that we would know what we are inheriting. Amen. That's why he is talking about it. And so when he's saying here in this scripture, as he is, so are we in this world. Look at your name and say, I'm anointed. Okay, now step out, step out on the limb. Say, just like Jesus. See, that's why he told his disciples, he said, there's going to be a time coming where you're not going to ask me for nothing. Come on, y'all. So you're not going to pray to me for nothing. But what you're going to do is pray to the Father in my name. Because the power's in the name. See, you've been given authority to release the name of Jesus. That's why you can tell a demon to get out in Jesus' name. Why? Because you are releasing heaven. You're releasing the force, but you've got to do things decently and in order. That's why I'm always telling you, you got to live right. Because you start talking about using the name of Jesus and you're not living right, then you're going to be like them seven sons of Sceva in, in the book of Acts. And they're trying to cast out a devil and they're like, man, that devil didn't recognize him. See, they really did not have, a, oh, this is my mess. I know I don't have much time, but you know you still got to get the truth. See, you lose your authority to release the name of Jesus when you fall into sin. So when you lose your authority, now all you can do is be victimized by devils and you cannot kick out one of them. So why is this so important? Why do you think Pastor Troy is like that? My pastor, is it that serious? Yes, it is. It is that serious. We can't play no games because I cannot disqualify myself because I have to be able to function and flow in this power all the time. Amen. We, talk, we were talking about a right now ready praise. Well, you don't have time to get ready. But when it's the things of the kingdom, you just got to flow in it. So don't allow yourself to be lulled to sleep and miss the significance or the importance of this. So as he is, so are we in this world. And so here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus never tried to gain power. You know what a lot of people do sometimes in church is they think manifestations or like uh, emotional expressions or different things demonstrate power. Amen. That does not demonstrate power. God's power flows through you. It just flows through you. But you know that there's people, I've met some people that do a lot of shaking and quaking and had no power. You see what I'm saying? You're shaking and quaking and shouting your wig off at church, but you can't even live right. You see what I'm saying? That's not powerful. You say, man, I cast out devils, but you can't even quit smoking. That ain't powerful. That's not God's power. Jesus never tried. See, now, this is what the demonic realm does. The demonic realm is a copycat realm. So they copy. So what do they do? They have to summons power. Come on, y'all. They have to summons and they have to, uh, you know, do all this weird stuff like uh, cooking spirits and doing on. They have to summons and they got to because they're calling on. They, what do they do? They start trying to uh, channel the dead. Come on. Don't don't be scared up in here. But they start trying to channel the dead and and they're trying to summons that power because it's copycat. So don't you think you got to be in the kingdom of God trying to summons. I didn't heard some people, come on, Holy Ghost, come on, Holy Ghost, come on, Holy Ghost. What you talking about, come on, Holy Ghost? Right, right. He's not coming because you're saying that a thousand times. Right. He just is. Right. Right. He's just flowing. He don't need you to start playing the tambourine to get him to flow. Right. He's just going to flow. You just got to be in a position to receive it Amen. and be a vessel that his power will flow through. And so if you understand, Jesus never tried to get power. He never tried 
to conjure up power. He just surrendered to it. What I'm doing over here at this church, I'm trying to get you to surrender Amen. to the power that's already in you. You already got the power to lay hands on the sick in you now today. Amen. All you got to do is get saved and you got enough power in you to walk in to a place where there's a person who's demon possessed. And you already, y'all in here with me, do you believe this stuff? I'm going to show you. You have all this power already in you. Well, how did I get it? When I got saved? Oh, no, Pastor, it can't be that simple. With the short amount of time I got, I'm going to make sure I show you this scripture. See, when somebody gives you stuff, you don't have to earn it. If it was given, you just got to receive it. But if something is given and you keep trying to earn it, then you must be trying to get something else. And so he says, as he is, so are we in this world. So that's the way it is. That's the way it works. Well, Jesus never tried to get any power. Listen, think about this. Because some of y'all feel like, oh, man, I'm going to have a bad day today because I didn't get my hour devotion. You might not have no time for no hour. This, this powerful is, listen, this power is too great. Well, oh, man, I know I ain't got that much time. If you feel like your devotion is giving you power, you don't know the power I'm talking about. You don't stir that power up like that. Well, I read 25 Bible verses, and so I'm ready to go into the day. You might wake up. Come on, see, this is going to mess up some of y'all religious folks. You might wake up running late and just get up. Get on your knees. Thank you, Jesus. This day belongs to you. I'm going in your power. Bam. That's it. And the devil is going to be like, you didn't even read nothing. No, see, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this next level? See, you, now I'm not giving you this excuse or you don't give God time, but I'm telling you, your time is not what's making you powerful. Your little devotion. People get caught up in that. I'm just doing another one. Well, you can have done 12 of them and you ain't even cast out nothing. Wow. Wow. So it's not, you cannot, God cannot be studied like that. You just got to let it flow. Let him flow. Jesus never tried to get power. He was trying to get a way to pray. And he kept getting interrupted. So if you're, what if somebody interrupted your devotion? Because they had a request for healing. He said, man, I'm not empowered enough to heal you because I didn't spend my hour in the prayer room. Jesus didn't get a chance to spend that. He was trying to get there to pray. And people were bombarding him with issues. And what did he do? He had to release what he already had. So you're not trying to get somewhere. Now, it is good to read your Bible and to have some discipline. But see, People are setting themselves up for failure because their schedule got changed. Yeah. Now, what you need to understand, if you, when, you, when you spend that time getting that word in your heart, then it's in your heart. And so now you woke up late. Jesus, man, I'm submitting myself to you. Just order my steps, go before me, whatever. Boom, get up, got to go. The devil says, you're probably going to cut somebody out today because you, you, know, you ain't even really ready for this day. The chances are you're going, you know. But then if you got his word, where do you have it? Oh, so the devil said you didn't read none, but you say, but I'm about to quote it, though. Oh, see? See? Oh, you didn't even read nothing. No, no, but I'm about to quote it all the way down the freeway. I'm just quoting Psalm 91. Come on, Psalm 128. I'm just quoting. Come on. That's what God is doing. He's trying to position you. See, God is taking away all. That's why he's disrupting our service. That's why he's, I know that's why he's doing it. Because he knows I'm like a teacher. I like to teach the word. But you know what? He's telling me you could teach people till they blew in the blue in the face that don't mean they're going to experience my power yeah. you can teach them and teach them again but it's going to be my power that brings the change right. so now what do i have to do surrender to his power right. so this this ain't my schedule whatever he wants to do now we do have a responsibility to teach the word that's why we got wednesdays and 
we, you know, we got our sons. We're always going to teach you. But I'm telling you, this power is something that's greater than what you can learn. So we've been given a power that we cannot try to gain, we cannot try to get that power. I'm going to try to be more powerful. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to just spend all these hours in prayer today. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong. If God tells you to do it, do it. But don't think that by doing that, because people wear badges. They wear badges based on how much they read, how much they do. But see, we're beyond that, church. We're beyond the long time doing all this stuff. We, listen, cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick. You see what I'm saying? Start calling in provision. Come on. We need to be in a situation where we can find somebody in need. And if maybe we don't have it, but we can say, let me pray. I'm going to call it from heaven. Matter of fact, I'm going to dispatch angels on your angels. Go out and get some money and bring it here now in the name of Jesus. See, the church looks at that stuff as though it's strange. God is trying to introduce you to another power. You can have somebody acting up at your job place and then God will say, well, why don't you talk to him? Well, I tried to talk to him. He says, but I want you to talk to them. I want you to speak into their spirit. Yeah. Oh, see, now here's the church. You know what's messed up about this? The church is like, they look at these spiritual things like we're crazy, but, but the demonic, they all into it. Yeah. You go get somebody that's in the devil stuff. They, they know about that. They know about speaking in people's spirits. They know about uh, voodoo and having, you know, them little dolls that they, you know, what you call them, voodoo dolls. They know how to do all that. That stuff is real. Yeah. They know how to get people's hair and put it all in a cup, and they know how to do all that weird stuff. Mm -hmm. But the church is, you know, they're still going to church. <laughs> Don't want to get too radical, pastor. No, this is what it's going to take. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Now, I'm not telling you to figure any of this out. I'm telling you to receive. Everybody just say receive. receive. Okay, so I'm not telling you to figure out nothing. I'm telling you to receive because I'm showing you in the word that it's already been done. And so now let's go to, uh, we're going to probably end up closing right here on this sermon. I'm um, excuse me, on this scripture in John 17. Don't get too excited because I'm, I got a couple more minutes. Some of y'all, some of y'all here close and you start closing your Bible. Ain't nobody said close the Bible. I just gave you another verse to go to. I'll be hearing them zippers, you know what I'm saying? Bible clothes and zippers and stuff just tucking away. All right. So just remember this. Jesus never tried to gain power. He just surrendered to us. So that same power, as he is in the world, so are we. And so, or as he is, so are we in the world. Now, John 17, 15 through 23 in the NLT. He says, this is what Jesus was praying to the Father. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. So there's no more escape for us, right? There's a lot of this going around, people trying to study the rapture. Uh, listen, let me tell you, you don't need to study the rapture. You just need to be ready for when it happens. Right. So quit trying to study it and trying to figure out when the rapture is going to happen because Jesus already said nobody knows the hour or the date. Right. So what we got to do is just be ready Amen. because he could come tonight. And if he didn't come, there's other people that were trying to study the rapture and then they died. Yeah. How many know when you die, the rapture don't mean nothing? Because it's appointed to a man once to die and after that judgment. And so the state you die in is the state you stay in. So what we need to be doing is being busy about our father's business and occupying until he comes. So whenever he comes or whenever he calls me home, he's going to find me working. He's going to find me working and releasing the anointing. He's going to find me working and releasing the anointing. And then when I'm called up or he comes and calls us all up, I'm ready. Amen. So I don't have to spend all these months and weeks of teaching you on eschatology and all that. Because a lot of people will learn and study that and miss it. But those of us that are busy about our father's business, we'll be ready whenever he comes. Amen. And so Jesus was saying, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but keep them safe from the evil one. So the evil one is here in the world, but Jesus is praying that you be kept safe. And so don't be having an escape mentality and don't push off things to heaven because God's will is not for you to get there so soon. Next verse. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. So he's talking about his disciples, but it's going to show us that it's 
referring to all of us who believe. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm, I am sending them into the world. So we're on assignment. I, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy. So you could be made holy because of what? The sacrifice of Jesus. Because of that payment, that debt of sin being paid, now you can be made holy. I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever, look at your name and say ever, ever, believe in me through their message. Stop right there. Who is that talking about? It's you. So that's how you became a believer. You believed because of the Bible, which is the message that the disciples were spreading. And so you believe that. And so now this applies to you. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. So God is going to be seen in all of us in such a way that people will believe that Jesus was real. And that Jesus came and he was sent by God. Next verse. I, now this is what we're going to close right here because I want you to meditate on this this whole week. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. He says, I have given them what? The glory. the glory. So this word glory comes from the Greek word doxa, which means the nature and acts of God in self-manifestation. And so God is put the glory on Jesus. Why do you think Jesus could heal the sick? He was anointed to do it. And now Jesus is saying, I have given them what? The glory that you gave me. So the same glory that he had, the same power, the same acts of God and self-manifestation that he had, he has given to you so that they may be one as we are one. And so now if he has been given, he has given us this power, then this is how we can do John 14, 12. But you shall do greater works than these. How can I do greater works? Well, I have the same power. And so now uh, we will refresh it uh, next week. But let me close with this Matthew 10, 8, because you got an assignment. And that's why I'm trying to get you guys into this radical praise. Your days of belly aching has got to end, man. You got to quit, quit all that whining and you got to start walking in power. You got to stop uh, seeing yourself as a wounded bird, as a person that's been damaged, that's been hurt by the world. Man, a lot of people have been hurt. Jesus was hurt, but he didn't stand at hurt place. He stepped into his power. He stepped into his assignment. And when you step into your power and your assignment, then all of a sudden the weights that used to try to weigh you down, they start to fall off because you're busy. You don't need to be strengthened so that you can feel good. You need to be strengthened so you can complete your assignment. That's what this is about. Church is never supposed to be a place where we go just because we want to feel good. It's supposed to be a place where we go and get empowered. And now we're ready to go out there and fulfill our assignment. So what's this say? Jesus says, heal the sick. Who, who, who's he talking about? This is you. Because we know Mark 16, 15 uh, through 18, they that believe they shall lay hands on the sick. And they'll be healed. This is for you. You being a believer in Jesus was never for you to just get to heaven. It was for you to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Some of y'all were scared of COVID, but he said cleanse lepers. How many know uh, leprosy is worse than COVID? And I told you guys that what if people, what if you start telling people that's sick and coughing to give you a hug? Y'all look at me like I was a fool. You wouldn't call me that because you love me, but brother, you tripping. But when you release heaven, you learn that I can't catch it. Come on, because I'm too busy giving it. I can't catch it because I'm too busy releasing it. 
See, I'm releasing it. And so heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. What does that say? Y'all believe this. See, I want you to get some stubborn tenacity within yourself. Some of you need to just get hard-headed on the devil. Maybe you got pains and maybe you got issues. Why don't you fight it in the spirit? Lay hands on yourself. Pray. I did that already. Do it again. I did it already. Do it again. Do it again. Keep doing it. Just defy the enemy. Just defy him. Keep doing it, man. And then you, you know, start asking God, Lord, there's somebody you need me to pray over. Come on. Some of y'all that got an ailment, you got a pain. Ask God to show you who you can. Oh, y'all, mm, I'm, I know I said I'm going to get us out of here, but don't be trying to ask God just for somebody for you to pray for. You know what? Because that's what Christians like to do. Secret. I'm just walking by. What are you doing? I just really prayed for them. Well, God says, I'm ready for that prayer to change. Because they don't even know you prayed for them. So you need to ask God. So if you need healing in your own physical body, ask God to reveal to you someone that you can actually lay your hands on and command healing to come into their body. How many of y'all going to do this? You say you need healing in your body. I said, ask God. You already prayed about your healing already. So why don't you ask God, reveal to me someone that I can lay my hands on. Now, I'm going to start teaching you a lot of these uh, prayers we've been praying, we've got to change it. So we can't be praying, oh Lord, please heal this. No, 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 no. He said the same glory, come on, that... I have, I've given to them. So Jesus had the authority. Jesus did not ask the demon to leave. Jesus did not ask the dead, would you like to come back? Come on. What did he tell Lazarus? Come forth. And he was just commanding. See, there's an authoritative prayer that we have as believers. See, some of y'all, you will... Hear me pray for you. There's a prayer request or something that might come out. And I'll say something like, well, I command the symptoms to leave now in Jesus name. That's a lot different than, oh, Lord, please heal this woman. I don't need to ask God's first permission for no healing to flow. I'm carrying. Oh, uh, I know we got it. I'm carrying healing in me. And so if Jesus did it, I can do it. And so heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Now look at this. Freely you have received. Told you guys, Jesus never tried to get power. Freely you have received. What does it say? Freely give. So you don't know if you've received until you start giving. See, some people are still waiting to get it, but God says, I already gave it. You're going to know I really gave it to you when you start giving it away. So I'm going to release an anointing upon you. Some of y'all, I, I feel it. I sense it in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all in this room right now, under my voice, uh, this week you're going to lay hands on somebody. So just be ready for that. Surrender to God's power. Let me just pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release this anointing. To obey your commands. You tell us in your word that we are to heal the sick. We are to raise the dead. We are to bring a healing from heaven on people. And we are to freely give it as you've given it to us. So we've received your power. We've received your anointing. We thank you for the time spent today. We had such a powerful time in here. But I decree and declare that your word is true. And we're not going to be a church that is doing church as usual. We are a church filled with disciples. And we walk in the same power that you walked in here in the earth. So I decree it right now that this church is filled with the anointing. The anointing be released right now. The power to lay hands on the sick. The power to raise the dead. God says, 
it's been freely given to you. Now you freely give it out. Don't be shy. Don't be bashful. God said these secret prayers ain't been working. Start laying hands on people. Let's start putting a demand on heaven. Let's start casting out devils. A lot of people depressed, they're tormented in their minds and they're, they're going through all this stuff and people don't know what to do. But we do. We can cast that devil out and demand change. Oh, we thank you, Lord, and receive all of heaven's power. Let it be released on your people and we will walk in it unashamed. We won't be bashful. We will be confident and fearless. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now I want you to tell three people on your way out, I am confident and fearless and I'm going to release God's power. Amen? I am confident and fearless and I'm going to release God's power. Who did? Oh, sinner's prayer. Praise God. Thank you for that. Maybe you're watching us and you don't know Jesus as Lord. Let's, let's bow our heads before we leave. And we want you right now to know that he loves you. Maybe you're here and, hey, how do I know if I got a right relationship with God? Just give him, just say, you know, here I am, Lord, forgive me. And you give your heart over to him, he'll come in and change everything for you. But you got to be willing to open your heart. So let's pray this prayer. Let's pray it together so that others can receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. <laughs>